this episode is going to be a little bit different. I mean, we've got Fords and Rovers going on. But as one person may have noticed in the background of one of my videos, there is a Peugeot 205 diesel and that is my neighbour's car. And he, he knows that I'm into cars. Um, he's just subbed as well, so he's watching this, so I've got to be careful with what I say. Um, but um, he's had a few issues with his Peugeot, and I'm going to take a look at it to see if it's anything simple. Uh, he's had some electrical issues where some of the gauges are doing some funny things uh, and some general electrical uh, issues. So I'm going to take a glance and see what the problems are. Right, I'm being very careful because I am on somebody else's property uh, and I have blotted out the registration that the owner has requested. That is his choice. It is part of the uh, the bargaining for me filming his car, um, trying to repair a simple issue. You know, we both win. I get content and hopefully I can fix his car. Um, it is a Peugeot 205 style. Um, it is a, I can tell you it's a H-Reg and that's all the information that I'm giving. Um, it is in really good condition. I mean, there's a knock on that bumper. Underneath, it's pretty much as you would expect. It's quite tidy. I mean, the owner has had the seats done. I'm just gonna show you inside, actually. I mean, that is superb. He's had the piping done on the seats. Honestly, it looks really, really nice. Um, I am gonna show you under the bonnet because it is a diesel. It is not a petrol that everybody gets obsessed about. Um, it has the pepper pots of the GTI, um, which apparently are very hard to balance because you don't have a center cap. You actually have to have a special machine that many Citroens have to use. Um, so that's quite interesting. It has had a battered life, but it's used. It's in daily use and it still works. I can hear it start up from a mile off. It's a really old, rugged old diesel. It is literally a tractor and they go on and on and on these diesels. Um, I'm going to open up the bonnet um, and then we're going to try and start the car and see if we can actually see what the issues of this car is. Oh, and it is actually a Peugeot 205 uh, style, so it's a later one. Um, and he's, I say he's had the piping for the seats done to match the actual strip. That is really cool. I've always liked this car and he knows I've got this. Uh, I've liked this car. He's giving me the keys um, so we can have a look at it now. Oh, I love a good dinosaur. Cook. I think the trick with these is you've got to get your finger in there at the catch and then I think you've got to pull it forward. That is actually quite stiff. This is... Oh, there we go. Bingo. We're in. Right, this is a 1.9 diesel. Please correct me because I don't know a heck of a lot about Peugeots. But I do know that these Peugeot diesels absolutely go on and on and on. Um, last year I had to um, sort out a bit of an air leak issue through, I think, this return line. There was a, a pump that the garage had put in, like a siphon pump, and it was it was leaking air. And air was coming all the way back out the, um, the return pipes. Uh, well, as I say, I don't know too much about diesels, but I do know they have like these... Uh, return pipes anyway this is looking really embarrassing so far it shows you how little i know about diesels i don't really like diesels in kind of respect i never own one um but as you say you've got your your way of actually bleeding the system when you actually fill up but uh when you've uh, actually changed the filter i should say because obviously air in diesels is ridiculous now i did do a bit of work to this car before now the electrical issue we're getting is a bad earth now i'm going to look at the earth point again so just twist this it's a bit crusty but it's quite side enough this is just it's used you know it's it's very honest right now this connection is really like so it, it's so french it's untrue it's like you're undoing a plumbing fitting in your house oh Right, take it off. Unscrew the whole thing. Right, no, well, get off. Go. Now, this fitting is a bit poor, but I think the first port of call is to actually just clean that up straight away. And I suspect I'm gonna clean this up as well um, because we might have a bad earth. I'm just gonna look around to see if there's anything 
totally obvious about what it could be. I think the first thing to do is actually start the car up and see what symptoms it produces. Yeah. Put this back on so we can actually start the thing. It'd be very, very useful indeed. Battery's gone. Oh, it's been a while since I've used this old thing. That's time I tried to get the rover started and I couldn't. I can't even get a good connection on that. His teeth are not wide enough. I am going to get a better one of these. It's not reading anything. Well, that's a good start. loose now I've discovered that I've now lost my 10 mil uh, socket which is utterly brilliant uh, I'll try and find that or buy another one I seem to be buying quite a few of them now I'm just gonna ease this up just a little bit in fact it just popped off I just get a bit of wig when it came off but um, yet yeah, that needs a clean I'm not happy with that whatsoever on the inside um, that looks okay. I'm going to actually put my battery tester on it and see if it actually is a good battery. Okay, let's fit this. Ah, it won't even register on this. Now, you know as well as I do, guys, when this does not work, the battery's goosed. I'm afraid, I mean, I can put the multimeter on that, but I'm afraid if that doesn't work, it's practically goosed. There is absolutely nothing left in that. It won't even accept a jump start. Uh, that's how bad it is. I mean, I'll actually try uh, again. I'll put the leads on. I'll clean that lead, put it back on, and I'll clean that and put it back on. And we'll see if it will still accept a jump start. I literally just sand the inside of this connection because you need some high grit sandpaper. I know this is going to detonate on me, but... Just clean it out until it's nice and shiny. Contact clean. I think the AA say that 90% of breakdowns or problems are caused by a bad battery, and I don't think they're wrong when they say that. I've seen so many bad batteries um, that I've, I've cars that I've bought and other people's cars. You know, that's just rubbish. Right, that is much cleaner now. It's a really nice clean surface. You don't need to clean the outside. It's just this bit in the middle that contacts the battery. So I'm going to pop that back on. Oh, there is another tool I'm going to use now, and it's this. And it's a battery terminal cleaner. And you literally just, it's a load of wire brushes. You literally just stick it on and just give it a twist, and it will just clean. The actual, ter the actual battery terminal itself. When I last worked on this car a couple of years ago when the owner was having problems uh, back then, um, it turned out that there was sort of, there was air in the actual um, main fuel line. It was a pinhole that uh, a Peugeot specialist managed to find. Um, but I did take the battery out and clean all these earth points and I doubt that that would be the main issue but you never know after a few years they do get gummed up quite easily um, now that is quite nice you see how that's cleaned up now it's just taken the outer surface off just a little bit I'm just gonna force it down you have to kind of really force it on um, that's quite tight and just take a like a small low off, you can see the bits coming off. Oh. See now, that is one nice battery terminal. It's a weird arrangement. There's actually dirt on the thread here. I think you just have to replace it, take this off and put it on the um, newer battery. It's a, it's a very actually convenient way of immobilizing your car, actually. You just turn the tap off and there we go. No one's stealing your car, but um, God, Persia are just weird. And then, um, let's see, just tighten that down. Please tell me whether this is actually a standard thing on Persia's, because this is just plain weird. That's tight. Right. OK. 
okay I'll tighten that back up and we'll give it a crack again yes I know the warriors will be saying oh you shouldn't have done that before that no well I've got to be honest with you there's nothing left in this battery to actually electrocute me with right now I could now with these jump starters you can attach it straight to um, the battery there is no need to find an alternative earth point it could be that it just wasn't making a very good connection in the first place absolutely nothing do you know what i think my jump starter has just died as well there was one dot and maybe that's half the issue with this oh right okay while um my jump starter is actually charging uh my jump leads have gone missing again so i need to find some of them uh but in the meantime while it's charging uh the negative side we've got two cables we've got this one that goes to that bolt in there but i can't really show you clearly but actually that bolt is not sitting exactly flush with the actual um side of the uh the wing well not with the wing it's the inner wing um but it's actually there's like a gap between that bolt and its actual fitting that can't help unless it's got one of these spring washers that stick out in that case it's making good contact but the issue i've got is i can't actually get my 10 mil socket squarely on that bolt because the actual cable is stopping me getting the actual socket on properly so i'm gonna have to think about that one this one this brown one goes down onto the gearbox and that's an easy one to change that looks to me like it's a 13 so i'm going to um i'm going to whack that off and i'm going to just give that a bit of a clean up because i think i cleaned it up last time i'm pretty sure this is one i did but I just want to make absolutely certain that we've covered all bases here. And I think that's the main thing with earth points. I'm going to have to figure out how I'm actually going to get that out. Or whether I can take it out. But we'll, we'll take the other one out first. Wow, isn't this ridiculous? That gearbox bolt there. Um, a 13 was too big. And a 12 wouldn't even go on. So I've had to use the old half inch imperial socket. Which I have um i haven't used this in a long time uh and typically french they've decided to put some imperial nuts on this car which is ridiculous however i'm gonna have to point out to the owner a couple of things um this is um not good down here it's actually there's a hole here um where it's actually separated from the inner wing and also this um i don't like this around the struts i mean that's not as bad it feels solid enough but this down here is a little bit more crusty uh it's it's like the inner wing is actually I, I don't that's not the actual wing it's the actual inner wing where this um oh kind of chassis row i suppose um it bolts to which uh yeah that's a bit of a, a, a nasty one on this side it's not as bad um as i say this car has been really well used and you know what um this sort of car is absolutely ripe for an electric conversion i know some of my subscribers are probably going to unsubscribe by me saying that but the truth is a lot of these diesels now they are banned from a lot of cities because of clean air zones um and unfortunately it's going to get really hard to run classic diesels and i think a car like this i think it'd be ripe uh, for some sort of electric conversion to make it usable because it clearly is a used car the owner absolutely loves it to bits um, it's just gone a little bit as old cars do just around the sides um, but underneath is actually really not bad at all it's scabby and surface rusty but the sills are quite strong um, from what I've seen it's a, it's a nice example and I'm trying to help him out trying to keep it on the road uh, to eliminate problems so we're just going to crack on and i'll crack this off right that's the earth point it doesn't look too bad the earth cable that doesn't look too bad either but i nevertheless i'm going to clean all this down it's held in with that 
um, spring washer. Then you've got the nut. It's been bent as well. And that is now clean. That is now clean. I've just gone over with contact spray, just inspected the cable. It doesn't look that bad at the end. Usually they go a bit green at the end, so that's where the contact cleaner will get rid of that sort of corrosion. Right, we're going to put that back on now, put the bolt back on, and um, then we'll start looking at this potentially. Right, what I managed to do is the routing of this cable is ridiculous. So I've bent the actual cable just slightly further back that way so I can actually get um, a 10 mil socket on it, and it's just eased. It's actually, it was actually quite tight. Um, which makes me think that this might not be the issue, but I certainly didn't clean this last time, so preventative maintenance um, is the key here. And uh, yes, uh, somebody's watching over there. It's really tight, this. I'm going really carefully. I was going really carefully. Now you can see why earth bolts can shear quite easily. I am going to. Put that there carefully, and I'm going to clean that up in a bit. That's good. That's clean, but there's some corrosion along the end, which I'm going to clean. There is another earth point as well that latches onto it, this cable. I think you can see, but that is a bit rusty, so I'm going to clean that up. I've ended up cleaning not just this one, but this one that it sits on because if that's dirty because basically this sits on this which sits on the earth mounting so if that's dirty this isn't going to work that's kind of why you've got to delve in deep with these sort of things right now i've cleaned that earth point and that earth point and now uh, the owner has given me his jump starter so now we can actually start the thing right second time of asking nothing right we've come to the conclusion that that battery is completely goosed so we're going the owner's going to get a new battery for it it won't even register on my tester and now he's got another problem on his mini so i've got to put the scanner in with his mini it's a 2007 so well, i'm going to look at that now yeah there's some serious lack of pill going on here right so, um, I'll see you in a minute. It's actually a bit difficult to check this, right? I'm gonna pause the camera. Sorry, I didn't film any of that really. Um, Dynastic scanner didn't really want to know with the Mini R56. Um, you had to turn the engine on for this to actually work um, through the Canvas software. I think it was Canvas OBD2 protocol, something like that. Um, but we got an oxygen sensor code. So what we, what I've done is the usual is I've deleted the code and we're just going to see if it comes back on. Um, he needs to get a new battery for the Peugeot and then we can proceed with the next step to see if I've actually made any difference by cleaning them earth points. Um, so we'll soon see. Um, the Mini is leaking oil. We discovered that there was no oil on the dipstick and it's leaking from the rocker cover quite badly i'm not familiar with minis i really haven't got much of an interest in them because i think they're just very overcomplicated uh german cars the r56 is a bit more german than the r50 the r50 was a rover product but even i don't like them uh mainly because they should have had the k series but that was just a bmw thing i suppose so I've given you a little tiny bit of variety today. Um, next episode, I'm sure we will get back to the Peugeot. He's going to get a new battery for it. Uh, and he gets an oil for the Mini. Um, so a little bit of an episode of just different shenanigans. So um, anyway, you take care, guys. I will see you very soon.